guys and welcome back to Painting with Mr. Bates. I've got my son with me again tonight. This is part three of our lesson. Hopefully our final part, we're going to put our final touches to our paintings. Just wanted to, um, we're going to use some different tools tonight. Um, we've been using a palette knife, uh, but tonight we're going to be using some different tools. I've got more because I've got a little bit larger painting. Uh, but basically we'll be using a fan brush, a small round brush, and a flat brush. And I'll be using an angle brush. Uh, he won't necessarily have to use one. Um, but for what I've got set up on mine, I'll be using an angle brush, but most of a couple round brushes, a flat brush, and some fan brushes. That's going to be our basic tools for tonight. I'm going to lay these right down. Our colors that we have, we're going to be using some titanium white. We have our greens back in with our olive green, our bright green, grass green, phthalo green, and then we have our red ochre once again, and back in with the rain squid. So that's our main colors that we'll be using. We're going to come in, we're going to do a little bit more detail work with our land features, and we're going to add in, uh, we're going to decide if we want a tree. I'm probably going to put uh, maybe one big tree in here somewhere in this area over here. I'm not really sure yet. Um, we'll get into that one in just a few minutes. We'll put in some more details, some more highlights around our land feature. We'll come in at our shoreline with the water, a little bit of water, but a little bit of motion with our water, you see all that, and of course with my painting and oil, of course I've got to have birds, but it shouldn't be too long tonight, get this finished up, so if you'll just stick around with us and stay tuned, we'll be right back and get started with part three of Painting with Mr. Bates. All right, welcome back, we're at the beginning of part three, we're working on putting our trees in. Um, so I'm working on uh, his very first time using a fan brush to try to lay in a tree. So uh, good practice with this one here. And once you've done this two or three times, it becomes a little bit easier. All right, now, load your brush up. I'm using my bright green. And I may add just a touch of the olive green to mine here. And um, I may go with a touch of the phthalo green. Not much in with my mixture as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load my fan brush up. I get a good bit on there, load it up. And we'll come in and we're going to take just, you can be working with just the corner of your brush here. You don't want to use the whole brush, just the corner to start off. And you're going to decide where do I want this tree to go at today. So I think I'm going to have my, I'm going to have a great big old tree right in here. So. I'm going to start probably, I'm going to say right about here. All right, and I'm going to start in a little. Come in just a corner. Put my brush. bit more that phthalo green. And just using the corner of the brush, just kind of dabbing it in, give the indication of a nice little evergreen tree growing out here. And you know, like I've said in many paintings, and if you've watched many of my paintings, in nature, things are never identical, they're never exactly the same. Trees look differently. One tree might look one way, while another tree looks another way. I'm just using a little bit more phthalo green, mixing it in. But in nature, things, things don't always look identical. And, you know, I've said many times in, in my lessons here that, you know, that's, that's the way things work in nature. Um, everything is unique. Everything has its, has its own style, its own sense of being. Um, let me just put it that way. As I get further down, I'm actually using all of my brush now versus just the corner. So I'll grab a little bit of that olive green just to kind of hit in a little bit of highlighting here on these lower lower branches. 
branches. I think it'll stand out just a little bit. Remember this is, we said this was going to be kind of like a spring type scene here. So we've got some bright greens coming in. All this new foliage. We've got some bright, uh, bright greens. Nice full trees going out here. All right. I like that. That kind of turned out pretty good. And you know, I think I'm going to come over. I think I'm going to come over to the side, to the other side over here. And maybe, maybe we got one. Maybe there's one over here, nice tall one over here that is coming off to the side. Can't see it well, but maybe we got one right here. Now, normally you would see me on this. I, I would say that this would be a wraparound and I would go all the way around. This is not going to be one of my typical wraparound paintings. And a wraparound painting, guys, is, is simply just what it sounds like. It's a wraparound. It goes completely around, and you would hit the, all the sides and everything all the way around your painting. So uh, that's, that's basically what a wraparound painting is. When we say wraparound, that's what we're talking about. I know we'll come in here and we'll put a little bit of highlighting in. And remember, each painting is, again, unique to you, the artist. You are the artist. Really good. That one right there turned out real good. And the more you practice, the easier it gets. If you'll hold your brush a little bit further back. And just let your brush just, just land. There you go. There you go. Get a little bit more paint on there. All right. Now we're gonna come in. Now that we've got our tree lo loaded up, uh, lined up here. I'm going to grab a little bit of the phthalo black, and I'm just going to mix it in on my, on my palette down here where this, where this green's at. Mix it in with the green that's already on my palette. I'm going to load this in, and we're going to give these trees a nice little trunk in here. Just kind of dot it in. Now, I don't want to go all the way through because I've got you branches that's going to be covering up most of that. So just gonna kind of put it in there, just like that. All right. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna stop there. I'm gonna wash this brush out. Now let me tell you something about washing your brushes uh, with acrylics. If you will get you different containers, and what I have here, I have one cup that is loaded with a mild soap, just just a little mild, basically a hand soap or dish detergent, any mild detergent, and some warm water. Use that one as your main wash. You're going to get most of your paint out of your brush that way. And then have you another cup right beside it, still warm water as a rinse. Just go in and rinse off. Just like so. All right, just like that. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to come back. I'm going to lay my palette down over here. We're going to come back here in just a moment. We're going to give this just a little bit of time to dry because I don't want to. I don't want to end up going over this section right here and hitting any of my lower branches and ending up with some smeared paint. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'll give this just a moment to dry. We'll come back. We're gonna come in. We're gonna work on more of our details in this area here. Work on our shoreline and work on the water, and we'll be able to call these paintings finished. So another few minutes here. Bear with us. And again, always hit that pause button, and you can go back and take a look at everything and see how it works out. Guys, if you get a chance, be sure to subscribe down below down here. Subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with everything. And right over here, right over here, visit that link and visit my Facebook page. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. And check out some of the things we put on there. Um, you can see a lot of our paintings that we have, some of our earlier paintings that we did in uh, when we was working with um, acrylics and everything. We were doing some of our abstract style paintings. You can also check out some of our photography work on there. We're on um, Dustle Photography Art or Macro Art. So be sure to check it out. Give me a like on this on my Facebook page and subscribe down below. And I'll be right back. All right. We've given this time a little bit of time to dry. We're gonna come back in just a moment and work on just kind of filling in this area right here and doing a little bit more highlight. <clears throat> what we're gonna do now. During the break, I came in and I put a little bit of red ochre right around my shoreline for our earth tone look. So now we're just going to go right into the titanium white. I'm just going to load my brush up, do my bristles loaded with some titanium white, just titanium white. I know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in now. This is similar to my tapping. I'm just going to come in right on the edge of the shoreline. I'm just going to lightly, very lightly go around. I'm not doing a solid line. I'm going to kind of give the indication of water coming up on the shoreline here. A little bit of a foaming action going on. area up here <clears throat> and you don't have to this area I'm going to do a little bit of a foaming look we've got some waves coming in uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of a foaming action going here right around the shoreline now to give the indication of some of some movement with our water I'm just basically going to take we'll take my brush and I'm just going to just dot in some little some little lines not deep lines, not really, not a lot of them, just kind of small ones, maybe some of it's a little, a little thick, and that's it, no more, not putting a lot of them, just a few in. I don't want to put a whole lot. Um, sometimes they say less is more, and in this case, less is more. Don't want to put a lot. I'm done. Brush is down. It's in the soap. It's in the soap. And uh, remember what I said use soap first. That'll help break up some of that paint, make it easier to clean your brushes. All right, so done. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and we're going to put some final touches. And to do that, I'm going to grab my small this is a little small half inch flat brush i'll we'll grab that he felt one some of good all right now we'll come in and i'm going to grab some of this olive green and a touch of the bright green mixed in with it and just as we did before we're just going to kind of give the indication of some and just kind of skip around they don't have to be in the same spot Gonna skip around, give the indication, maybe some some nice bright green grasses growing up along the shoreline here. A 
with a little bit of this grass green mixed in with it. There we go. I'm going to come up right around this area right here. Maybe we've got some that's kind of going off into the water here. Who knows? All right, I might just barely touch up in my trees up here just to get a little bit of highlighting going. Not enough you to even really see on the camera. And just like with the water, less is more. You don't have to put a lot. Put just a little bit in there. And I'm done. That's all I'm going to put. I'm going to make it a, a, just a white thing. And I, I want most of my most of the focus to be on the mountains, and that's our that's our main focal point for this is the mountains. See, this here just gives a, a gives an indication of a nice springtime uh, valley going here. The, the the spring is strong. We've got all these bright colors in the valley. The water, maybe we've got this river running off the side and into a little small uh, basin here. And got this nice little spring valley going. Mountain scene in the background. Still has some snow on it from the winter fall. But you got all the spring colors starting to pop out. All the bright greens and the medium greens. All those spring color greens and the grasses are starting to pop. Uh, that's the whole indication. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to come back and we'll grab... My small, my little small round brush. You know I gotta have birds in my, in all of my paintings. That's sort of my, sort of my trademark. We're gonna come up here. And we're gonna just off in the distance, and just a couple little dots, just a, a little bird come way off in the distance. Maybe there's one over here. So far off, you can't hardly see it. Little dot here. All right, maybe we're getting a little bit closer, so just a little V. Let me make my palette get a little bit more. That one coming in here a little bit closer, so you can see that one a little bit better. Maybe we got one coming down over the mountain right here. And I don't know, who knows? Maybe we got one right in here. Maybe we got one coming over the trees here. Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's one right here. Nice big bird right here coming in. Oh, let's saw. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of titanium white in that. Give us a, more of a gray. Maybe we'll get a little lighter color. Yeah, let's see. Maybe there's another. Nice big bird coming in right here. Man, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe there's one off in the distance right here. You can put as few or as many as you want. I like birds, so I've always got to have a good bit of birds in my paintings. I just, I just like birds. Maybe we got one right about here. Coming in, you can't hardly see it. Who knows? Maybe there's another one right here coming over the mountain line. And we'll put, we'll, we'll add one more. Maybe we got one more. Maybe we got one more little, nice little big bird coming in right about here. All right. So we've got our birds coming in. It's springtime. They're coming in from over the mountains. And they're coming down into this nice meadowy area here. So we're going to call this painting complete. And now what you do, and now I'm going to do this. And Cody, if you're having my spray bottle back there. I'm going to moisten my palette here. I want to get that kind of kind of watery. I want to get it not completely watered down. 
I want to get that paint really loose. So that I can come in and now we're going to sign. Just gonna roll my brush. And there we go. We are done. That wasn't that hard. And again, our focal point is going to be our mountains. You can put as many birds or as few birds as you want. You can have you, you can have a whole flock of birds coming in, or you can have just a few birds coming in. You can have a forest. You can have a meadow. It's your painting. It's your choice. Ever how you want to do it. Um. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the better you get at it. Um, don't be disappointed if your first painting doesn't turn out the way you want it to turn out. And whatever you do, don't give up. You know, let that be a practice and say, I'm going to go back, I'm going to try again. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. If you've never used a palette knife before, it's kind of difficult at first. You get a hang of it. Uh, same thing with using some of these uh, specialty brushes, like fan brushes, things like that. If you're not used to using those uh, for doing things like your trees or you know, some of your touch-up work, things like that, it can be a little tricky to get the hang of uh, not going in you know, full force like you will with some of your other brushes. Um, naturally doing the mountains and everything and using, using the techniques that we use, which is the palette knife and the tapping technique. It gives you a lot of texture. This part right here is still wet, so I don't want to touch it. Um, but it, it gives you a lot of texture in here. And then the mountains, you can go across here and actually fill the ridges on the mountains. Uh, same thing with, with a lot of the trees and everything like that. So take your time. Practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the more you learn. I hope you've enjoyed this. And remember, guys, subscribe to my channel for future videos. And that you'll be able to go back and you can just look at these at any time you want to. Right up here, guys. Check out the link to my Facebook page. Be sure to go out there. Give me some thumbs up. Tell your friends about me. Send them out. Take a look at some of the work that we've done on the Facebook page. And we will see you next time where you shall see me. And until then, happy painting and let your imaginations flow.